Nasrena Sadani Rastakuva comes at Yam Param Di Mahi. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I for my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no, uh, and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate, oh, I'm sorry, uh, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitra votra. Paramo nirmatsranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon in mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kim va purer ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra kriti bihi sususubis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam pipita bhagavatam rasam alayam Mohor Ahoraska Bhuvi Bhagavataha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swatkata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyan Taksto Vadrani Vidunoti Shuhit Satam 
to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. <clears throat> and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who, con who constantly hears about him. In this way, a devotee uh, develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Uh, dormant transcendental knowledge, there's no natural. Uh, in this way, a devotee naturally develops yeah, yeah, his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the transcendental service of the Lord, in the devotional service of the Lord. Nasta preso badresu nityam bhagavata seva ye bhagavati tamasloki bhakti bhavadi naiski. Tadarajas tamo bhavo. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chete tairanavitam. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavad bhakti yoga taha bhagavad tattva vigyana mukta sangha sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate becomes steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante chasyakarmani drista evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga suffers the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, Chapter 15, Text Number 15. Yubis Makarna Guru Sadhya Kamish Kamush Vadabra. Rajanya Varyarata Mandala Madita Su Rajanya Varyam Rata Mandala Madita Su Agrekaru Mama Vibo Rata Yuta Panam Agrekaru Mama Vibo Rata Yuta Panam Ayur Manam Si Chadrisa Saha Oja Archat Translation. It was he only who withdrew the duration of life from everyone and who, in the battlefield, withdrew the speculative power and strength of enthusiasm of the great military phalanx made by the Kauravas. Headed by Bhisma, Karna, Drona, Salya, etc., their arrangement was expert and more than adequate. But he, Lord Sri Krishna, while going forward, did all this. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The absolute personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, expands himself by his plenary paramatma portion in everyone's heart. And thus, he directs everyone in the matter of recollection, forgetfulness, and knowledge the absence of intelligence and all psychological activities. 
Bhagavad Gita 1515. As the Supreme Lord, he can increase or decrease the duration of life of a, of a living being. Thus the Lord conducted the battle of Kurukshetra according to his own plan. He wanted that battle to establish Yudhisthira as the emperor of this planet and to facilitate this transcendental business. He killed all who were on the opposite party by his omnipotent will. The other party was equipped with all military strength, supported by big generals like Bhisma, Drona, Salya, and it would have been physically impossible for Arjuna to win the battle had the Lord not helped him by every kind of tactic. Such tactics are generally followed by every statesman, even in modern warfare, but they are all done materially by powerful espionages, military tactics, and diplomatic maneuvers. But because Arjuna was the Lord's affectionate devotee, the Lord did all this himself without personal anxiety by Arjuna. That is the way of the devotional, that is the way of the devotional service to the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here is another evidence that Krishna protects his devotee, even in the most trying situations and when a situation looks like it's impossible to uh, win, the Lord makes the impossible possible because he's in the heart of every living entity. Therefore, he gives knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness so because of that, he can make the enemy commanders forgetful of something. And they can make uh, um, you know, major blunders, although in normal times they wouldn't do that. So the, this was, it all happened because Krishna wanted to establish Yudhisthira as the emperor of the uh, Kuru dynasty or em emperor of the Kuru, the Kuru Empire which uh, stretched through all parts of the earth planet. <clears throat> so uh, this is what is not understood by people who have self-interest. They rely on their own knowledge and their own uh, expertise and their own uh, affiliations like Duryodhan, he, he affiliated himself with very powerful people and people who had extreme knowledge like Dronacharya, who's an expert at warfare, and Bhisma Dev, who was, who was basically undefeatable. But however, because Krishna was on Arjuna's side, they were all destined to lose. And the that's where, therefore, Prabhupada describes Krishna uh, as having omnipotent, an omnipotent will. Omnipotent means it's a Latin word, all powers, and his willpower is all powerful. So no one can uh, go against it or nullify it. Now, this is a question of consciousness. And uh, consciousness is the, uh, it can be dis explained on s different levels. So th that the different levels of consciousness are called Brahma Pucham. It's explained in the 13th chapter, fifth uh, verse of Bhagavad Gita in the purport. However, it also is explained in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada says, within the body, or the material body, there are five different departments of existence known as anamaya, pranamaya, manamaya, uh, uh, monomaya, vijnanamaya, and anandamaya. Maya doesn't mean maya like illusions. It's, it's, uh, maya is the way you pronounce that. It has two long vowels, but when the, it's just regular uh, short vowel, maya, uh, that means 
a certain state of consciousness. So in the beginning, all living entities are food conscious. It's called anamaya. And like a child or an animal uh, is satisfied only by getting nice food. So that's the stage. Uh, in that stage, the goal of life is to eat sumptuously. And that's called anamaya. Ana means food or grains. <clears throat> so uh, when one becomes a little more advanced in consciousness, it's called pranamaya. Uh, pranamaya means one is uh, conscious of living symptoms. So what are living symptoms? People move, people talk, uh, people uh, uh, are uh, active. So this uh, pranamaya uh, is usually people are very concerned about living and not being uh, you know, endangered in any way, not being, an ang not being uh, afraid or being pursued by anyone. So therefore, uh, this is a stage called pranamoya, or, or consciousness of one's existence and conscious of the living symptoms. Then after that stage comes manomoya, which, which is a mental platform. Um, when, and uh, in materialistic civilization, primarily uh, is situated in these three stages, Anamoya and, and uh, uh, Pranamoya and Manamoya. In other words, uh, conscious of food, conscious of living symptoms, symptoms and conscious of mental activity. So that's uh, what you call the level of most people in material existence. But after that stage, there uh, comes what's called Vigyanamoya, or, oh, by the way, in that, in that stage, that materialistic stage, uh, people are interested in economic development and then uh, defense, defending themselves from annihilation, and, and then uh, speculation or uh, what you would call philosophical approach to the values of life based on economic development and sense gratification. So after that, uh, one comes to a philosophical level and uh, may be able to understand that I am not this body. So they begin to differentiate between the body and the soul. And this is called Vigyanamaya. So uh, that they begin to see that they, they, they're not, ex not only this body, but there's something in the body that animates it and that is uh, uh, understood as consciousness. And that's coming from something that's not material. So this is a in uh, a higher stage, and this is the beginning, or, or let's say a, a faint light of spirituality. Then by further evolution or development in spiritual life, one comes to understanding of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and one develops the relationship with Krishna and through devotional service. And this level of Krishna consciousness is called Anandamaya. And Anandamaya means that one is blissful due to uh, knowledge and eternity. In other words, one has already realized knowledge and eternity in the sense that they, they understand I'm not this body, I'm an eternal soul. And, but then one goes further and feels transcendental bliss always. So uh, the, this joyful nature is called Anandamaya, and that's on the level of pure Krishna consciousness. So therefore this Manamaya, I mean, I'm sorry, Anamaya, Pranamaya, 
Manomaya and Vigyanamaya are, are considered to be still in the, condi in the conditioned material stage of life. But as soon as one attains the Anandamaya stage, he's a liberated soul. He or she is a liberated soul. And Bhagavad Gita also explains this uh, when it says, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, La Sochati Nakanksati, Samaksar Vesabhuta Su Madhbhaktim. So it, it says that uh, this Brahma Bhuta stage is the same as Anandamaya stage. But then, one can go further, and uh, and that is where, well, this Brahma Buddha says, no more anxiety, no more hankering. One feels, one is prasanatma, one is, feels transcendental bliss, one is satisfied by virtue of their soul and not not interested anymore in bodily pleasures. And then, but, it, in when one goes even further, where they samaksarve uh, subutesu, they have, they experience this uh, equality of all living beings, because they see that all living beings have an eternal soul, and and then the super soul is present in the heart of all living entities. So therefore, they uh, respect all living beings, and so that's that's uh, that's a higher stage than simply. Uh, uh, Brahma Bhuta, and then uh, they, of course, there no, there's no sense gratif desire for sense gratification, and uh, uh, so now they begin to desire or hanker for spiritual life rather than material life. So uh, they don't. The Mayavadis want to, want to eliminate all desires, but the devotees at this stage are, are full of material, spiritual hankering to please Krishna. And they're freed of all the material stage, stages, anamaya, pranamaya, manamaya, and vigyanamaya. And then they're, they're in this transcendental stage where the super soul and the individual soul um, are uh, experiencing oneness, oneness of purpose, not oneness of the jiva becomes the Paramatma, but this oneness of purpose, where one follows the orders of the Lord, and uh, and there's no losing of one's individual existence. So uh, this is uh, confirmed in Bhagavad Gita also, where it says Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param. Uh, in this Brahma Bhuta uh, Ananda Maya stage, is complete only when there's an exchange of love between the Supreme Lord and the subordinate living entities. So unless one comes to the Nandamaya stage, they're actually wasting their time in material life. And uh, they're not, not living on a higher state of consciousness than that of animals, basically. So this is what differentiates devotees from Mayavadis and devotees from materialists. And here we see that Arjuna is such a devotee. He's come to this stage of prasanatma, completely self-satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization due to the mercy of the Lord who's cleared away all his doubts. And then, now he's ready to reciprocate with the Lord by following his orders strictly. So that's the same thing for a devotee. When we accept initiation, and we promise to follow the regulative principles. That's very similar to Arjuna uh, becoming self-realized and beginning to follow or everything Krishna says. So that karishi vachanam tava, I will uh, now, I'll do whatever you say, Krishna. In the same way, one promises to follow the regulative principles and chant 16 good rounds every day. So that following uh, is a symptom of being elevated to the transcendental ple uh, level of Krishna consciousness. If one maintains it without uh, uh, breakage, so Mamchayo uh, Vipocharine, it says that uh, one who engages in Krishna consciousness always and never falls down under any circumstance 
rises above the influence of the three modes of material natures and enters into the state of uh, this Brahma Bhutta, this transcendental state. So the the following of the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness is absolutely important in order to rise above the influence of the modes of material nature and begin to experience this transcendental uh, state of Brahma Bhutta or Ananda Moya, which is uh, on the level of Krishna of, of Krishna himself and and all liberated devotees. So Prabhupada says, but because Arjuna was the Lord's affectionate devotee, the Lord did all of this himself without personal anxiety by Arjuna. That is the way of the devotional service to the Lord. So when we engage in genuine devotional service, we actually experience these things. We see how the Lord is opening doors for us, is clearing obstacles for us. And because we're patient and we depend on the goodwill of the Lord, we're able to go through all difficult situations in the material world without becoming affected by them. Uh, and this only increases our faith more and more in Krishna and convinces us that we've made the right decision to follow the regulative principles and chant Hare Krishna. And uh, if we have the uh, wherewithal to preach effectively to other people uh, the importance of Krishna consciousness. Okay, let's stop there. there. Are, there are there any questions about this purport or the verse? I have a question, Raj. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? You mentioned the history of Maharaj Judas here being yeah, king of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. That the world was had one emperor, you know. Mm -hmm. Even leave Maharaj Judas still alone, and keep him even later. But they don't say anything about it. The history just goes up to certain. Well, it's not in the Bible, it's not in the Quran, it's not in the Buddhist scriptures, but it's in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah, but it's in the same history. History, because history only goes back about, uh, of the materialists, only goes back about 3,500 years ago. Doesn't go beyond that. They might say it does, but obviously we know it doesn't because they don't, they don't mention any of this. Okay, if you, if you, if they, okay. Do they believe the world, the history be, began from uh, uh, 300, what's that? 3,500 3, years, years ago? Well, according to the Bible, at least it's been this way for many, many years, they, they believe it started around 5,000 years ago. Of course, with all the uh, scientific uh, and, uh, let's say, advancement and carbon dating and all those techniques, uh, the scientists debunked that idea that the world is only 5,000 years old. Well, because of, of the archaeology and carbon dating and all that, uh, the scientists have proven that the, the world started way before 5,000 years ago. They're talking about hundreds of millions and billions of years ago. But you know what Prabhupada says? That I mean, the, the Bible, for up until, uh, you know, the, like the 19th, 20th century, according to the Bible, only started 5,000 years ago. The, the, the history, when God creates the world, Well, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of mistakes in the Bible. Because uh, the Jews who wrote the Old Testament, uh, they put in a story about the creation because they had to start somewhere. But uh, the, their, their main interest was writing the history of the Jewish uh, uh, religion or people. And 
That only goes back about 3,500 years ago. I mean, they don't have any records before that. Let's put it like that. There's no records. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there's archaeological proof that there was existences before that. But, you know, when they wrote their uh, Old Testament, they had to put in something about creation. So what they put in was generally, you know, uh, right. You know, God created everything, this one God. And, uh, he, and they say it took him uh, six days and the seventh day he rested. It's all in the Genesis of the Bible. Uh, but that they were not so interested in how everything started. They were interested in their history, but they couldn't do their history without having some starting point. So they had, they had to put something about the creation. So they don't have concept of uh, beginningless. Well, uh, it's just like the existence of the soul. They don't believe the soul begins until it has a material body, okay? And, uh, and that's explained in the Bible also. So, uh, but after that, according to most of the Judeo-Christian philosophy, the soul can attain eternity, you know, if it, you know, uh, follows God's instructions and live forever. But their understanding of the individual soul is incomplete because they don't think that before coming into the material body, the soul existed. Yeah, like you said about the Gita, to that. There was never a time. Yeah, So you see, I mean, that, let, let's go back to your question. Mm -hmm. The ancient Jews put uh, some explanation about the creation but their main concern was the history of their people, right? But what they put in is not, is not uh, false. In, in a general way, it does explain the creation of the world because there's one God and he created everything. But it's not detailed. Like if you go in the Bhagavatam and read uh, the third canto, there's a detailed explanation of how it actually happened. Very rich history. Well, yeah, I mean, all knowledge is in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Okay. It's very sad, you know, they think that everything, you know, everything began. Uh, well, it's up to us to, to spread the glories of the Bhagavatam. You know, the Prabhupada has given us that job, that service. So we have to preach, uh, help people develop uh, the the desire to read Bhagavatam and, and hear it. What actually happened? That no other scripture has such detailed explanation of the creation, of history, and also of the spiritual world. There's no, there's no explanation of, uh, of the spiritual world in other scriptures, you know, detailed explanation. You, they, don't, they don't, you know, it's, it's very sketchy. Whereas Bhagavatam is exacting. That's what Bhagavad Gita used to say that if all the books of the world are uh, destroyed, whatever, mm. there's no loss. It's the only small part of the time. Yeah. Because everything, we, we need to know. Uh, Not only it says that, you know, so, uh, also the Vaishnava Charis, I said, you don't have to read any other book to be educated. Mm. Just this one book. You know. I mean, Two books, Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. But see, Bhagavatam is the extension of Bhagavad Gita. Everything explained in Bhagavad Gita is elaborated more deeply in the Bhagavatam. Basically, Lord Krishna summarized all Bhagavatam in Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Hari Bo, yeah. Brahma Buddha and Nanda Maya are the same. Yeah, that's explained in the later on in the Srimad Bhagavatam when he gets to the prayers by the personified Vedas. Uh, so it says 
it says, as long as the living entities are situated in the lower four stages of life, anamaya, pranamaya, manamaya, and vijnanamaya, they are considered to be in the material condition of life. But as soon as one reaches the stage of anandamaya, he is a liberated soul. The anandamaya stage is explained in Bhagavad Gita as Brahma Bhuta. Okay. There it is said, in the Brahma Bhuta stage of life, there is no anxiety and no hankering. This stage begins when one is equally disposed toward all living entities, and it expands to the stage of Krishna consciousness, in which one always hankers to render service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This hankering for advancement and devotional service is not the same as hankering for sense gratification in material existence. In other words, hankering remains in spiritual life, but it becomes purified. Similarly, similarly, when our senses are purified, they are freed from all material stages, namely anamaya, pranamaya, manamaya, and vijnanamaya, and they become situated in the highest stage, anandamaya, or blissful life in Krishna consciousness. So Anandamaya and Brahma Bhuta are the same thing. Hari Bo, all glories to Prabhupada.